we need to add, we need to add offense. We need to add a bat. And then he kind of corrected himself and, you know, threw in a second bat as they, they'd really like to add two. they're really focused on the one big one at this point. And I thought that was fascinating, not because we didn't already think that that was something that they wanted to do, but uh, Jerry reiterating that tells me, uh, yeah, they understand what Adam Frazier is. Yeah, they understand what J.P. Crawford is, and they understand that they have a hole offensively at catcher as well, that even if they go get a Trevor Story or a Chris Bryant at third base or have to trade for a third baseman with similar projected production, but that they need to go out and add another guy, and that other guy probably has to be an outfielder. Joe, and and, and we've talked about this quite a bit before. Uh, Say a Suzuki's out there. Um, I've been trying to dig up uh, as much gold on him as I can. Um, I'm probably going to talk to uh, someone tomorrow that spent a lot of time seeing him the past two seasons, mostly this past season. So uh, next week I might have something uh, pretty good on uh, uh, Suzuki uh, from a guy who actually used to scout in Seattle and and now he's with Kansas City. So, um, you know, we can talk about Suzuki, but Michael Conforto is the guy that always comes up because he's left-handed because it seems yeah, like yeah. the chances to get a left-handed, a reliable, offensive-minded, left-handed hitting third baseman or any sort of an infielder to add to this group just isn't there. Like Mike Moustakis, but how much can you rely on him to actually produce in the middle of the order? Like you hope to get some of that back. That's not somebody you can just go, he's our guy. So if you're adding whoever at third base, it sounds like going out and getting a guy like Michael Conforto. uh, You know, maybe there are other options. He's the guy I'm always going to come back to because I just, if you told me right now they added Conforto and Trevor Story, I'm thinking that's an above average offense now. Like I really buy that Conforto is going to hit and that 2021 was a, was a mirage and there were lots of other things going on. And that if they, they handle him, right, he's going to go out there and play average defense and he's going to hit like, that's his resume. That's his track record that he hits and hits pretty big. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if we woke up in September that Conforto played 120 games and he was the best hitter on the team. That wouldn't surprise me at all. That's how much I believe in Conforto. And that's the reason why I keep bringing him up. Maybe I'm crazy, but I, I love the idea. And I hope that's the direction they end up going. No, I, I think you hit on something in the middle there that is critical with Conforto. And I think that's just how they, how they use him, how, how they keep him off his feet, how they protect those hamstrings and protect that lower body. And, protect that shoulder. I mean, Conforto has kind of been through the ringer the last three years with injuries. Uh, and some of them have been pretty devastating. I mean, we saw him uh, dislocate his shoulder twice, kind of like Tatis did in 2019. And then this year, um, you know, he's dealt with bouts of COVID and dealt with uh, terrible hamstring injuries. He's never been able to stay on the field. And if, if Seattle did one thing very, very well in 2021, they did a lot of things really well. Um, it's it's rotating their outfielders and keeping them healthy. They they handled Mitch Hanniger brilliantly. They handled Kyle Seager brilliantly in 2021, and I think it really led to uh, a lot of the lineup and the offensive players staying healthy all season. So th- for that reason, I think Conforto would be a perfect fit for Seattle. Money is always going to be the question when it comes to these guys, and we'll see exactly what happens. There's a, but you know there's there's other guys that I think are interesting like you could call up Tampa Bay about Brett Phillips. I think he's, you know, maybe an interesting left-handed outfielder that you could produce some runs. He's not going to blow anyone away. Um, Andrew Bennett, Tendi, this, I mean, there's th- other options. Yeah. Let me ask you this then. Um, if you add, let's just say Trevor stories at their basement, just for the sake mm-hmm. of argument, just so I can place a name there. We're not expecting Trevor story to go out and throw up a 140 WRC plus he's never done it. He's not going to do it now. He's never done it before. Maybe he's a 105 guy. Maybe he's a 115 guy. Maybe he's a 120 guy, at least early. Who knows? But that's probably the range. And while that's great, and I like Trevor's story, and I'd rather have him than not, you still probably need to go out and add another bat. Phillips is interesting, but you're looking for another run producer here. Mm -hmm. And you might have to take a risk. You might have to take a defensive risk, or you might have to take the injury risk that, uh, that, that you were just talking about with Conforto. Um, but while you were talking about that, I started to think about the Cincinnati Reds again. Uh, Nick Castellanos is walking. They're talking about trading Luis Castillo and Ty- they're clearly not interested in attempting to compete in 2022. Who knows how much longer that is? There is there, there's a name on that roster. Oh, are you going? 
dicks yeah, out like a sore freaking thumb that I just think is worth mentioning. I'm not saying he's available. I'm not saying he will be available. I'm not saying the cost wouldn't be prohibited. I'm just saying we have not talked about Jesse Winker, have we? No, uh, Jesse Winker would be an incredible acquisition. Definitely a guy that you throw in left field. He's a defensive uh, liability a bit. I mean, mm-hmm. probably a below average defender, but if you want a bat, I mean, if you want a bat, he's he's a guy that you could certainly look at. I, I love that. I mean, he was one of the best players in the National League in the in the first half of the season. If you want to get really aggressive, use your money a little bit, grab one of those pitchers, take Mike Moustakis and all that money, send a couple of pretty good prospects and have them include Jesse Winker, you might be able to get the Reds to listen. Because I, I don't know what their plan is. And, and it's probably out there and, and certainly – you know, way down the, uh, obviously the Reds aren't trying to trade Jesse Winker right now, because if that were the case, we would definitely hear about that. Uh, and he might be the one guy on that roster that they're not really interested in moving because, uh, because of the control years and his age and, and things like that. They, they may think, Hey, in a year or two, he's still going to be here. Let's kind of sort of build around it. I don't know what their plan is though. I don't know if their plan is 2023 or 2025 or 2027, but the fact that they're listening on those three pitchers and might trade two or three of them. They could trade all three of those guys and they let Wade Miley walk. Um, It's just, it's strange. And I just think maybe they're just in a position where kind of anything goes, you know, did you think I was going Joey Votto, by the way? No, I had a feeling you were going with Winker, Winker, Um, but I also thought Winker had three years of control left and apparently he only has two years of control Mm -hmm. left. So yeah, I think that's a really sexy name and he might be more attainable than, than people think. Uh, especially considering the year he had his arbitration cost is going to start to climb. And I would imagine in 2023, his arbitration cost is going to be considerably higher. Mm-hmm. Let me throw one more name at you that I think is interesting and we'll see what direction this team goes. I've always been a huge fan of Max Kepler. It hasn't clicked yet, yeah. but that's another name with, you know, Trevor Larnick and Brent Rooker and um, you know, name, name all of these outfielders mm-hmm. coming up through through minnesota system what do you think of max kepler yeah i like the idea i like the player um he hasn't really you know hasn't clicked yet, yet. Into, yeah th- there's a lot of things to like there still i know he's he's got an extension does he not i don't know if you have his uh contract in front of you the twins though seem like with buxton back that if they're making a deal with really any of their veterans unless it's killing money unless it's kicking bad money like trading josh donaldson they might think of it that way but if they're trading max kepler it's I'm not saying you can't do it with prospects, but they're obviously trying to do something in in 2022. They're not trying to sell and think about 23, 24, 25. I think they made that clear with the Buxton thing. Um, Obviously, they haven't made any major moves at at this point. But if they're trading Kepler, you got to think they want either major league ready guys, guys that are ready now, or a combination of major league ready guys and probably pitching and guys that are actually already performing at the major league level. So I'm not really sure. I mean, maybe we go back to this whole Kyle Lewis idea. Maybe he helps you, you know, obviously not straight up, but maybe Kyle Lewis helps you get a guy like Max Kepler. And you just, you know, I mean, in a way you're swapping handedness there. I would almost think that would be a deal that might go straight across. I mean, Seattle might have to throw in a, um, a pitcher just Mm -hmm. to kind of sweeten the deal a little bit with, with Kyle Lewis's injury history, but uh, Max Kepler is owed 14 million through 2022 and 2023. Yeah, he is signed. And there's a club option for, I don't know the number for 2024. So he's controlled through three years. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that's probably a pretty hefty club option for 2024, but I mean, he's just, he's a guy that's never clicked. Um, He's had one year over three war granted 2019. It was four and a half war. It was a great year. Um, but he's a guy that, you know, he's posted over 110 weighted runs created plus just once he's been under a hundred, uh, five of the seven years that he's been in the league, uh, still only 29 years old. I think if you do Kyle Lewis for Max Kepler and you throw in, oh, maybe it takes Connor Phillips. Uh, sure. it, it might be an interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he does uh, one thing Kepler does give you, he gives you thump. Yeah, he certainly does. Uh, and what side of the plate does he hit from, Joe? He's a lefty. That's there why I go. brought him up. There you go. It, you know, while I do think a lot of times handedness is overrated, um, it, I, I do believe that you do need some balance. Um, you just don't give away talent. You just don't leave right-handed talent on the board. If you can get a, a significantly better right-handed bat than Max Kepler, you just do it. 
and you don't worry about it. But I, I pulled up Kepler's uh, the the uh, the details on Kepler's deal. Like you said, it's about uh, it's six seven five and twenty two. It's eight and a half and twenty three. So what's that? Fifteen and a quarter. And then the options for ten million dollars, but only a one million dollar buyout. Man, so that's a great deal. It's it's three years and twenty five and a quarter million dollars. Essentially, it's a it is a great deal. Even if he's an average bat. It's it's a good deal. Like you and stick you know him right, and, and you know, I mean, he's Minnesota, not necessarily Gold Glover, but this is a guy who can handle oh, that spot. No. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people think Kepler has to move to first by the time this deal ends, but you know, you think of it from Minnesota's point of view. And if you go out and you acquire Kyle Lewis, not only does Minnesota one of the few fields in Major League Baseball with a short porch in left field, mm-hmm. um, so that plays to Kyle Lewis. They have Byron Buxton there, who's now signed for seven years. You can comfortably put. Kyle Lewis in a corner and take some stress off of his legs. Right field has a really tall wall.